Hello everyone, as a child one of my most favorite sweets were these gummy worms with different flavors, and today I decided to make a huge version of it. Our first taste will be unusual, carrot. We take a basin and begin to peel the carrots with a vegetable peeler. The clean and peeled carrots are sent to the basin. And so we clean out all 30 kilograms. We filled the base with a large bunch. Now we take a juicer, substitute in the juice bowl, and turn the carrot into carrot juice. The first bowl was filled, and we will accumulate juice in buckets. Therefore, we pull it from the bowl. Carrots are not very juicy, so the cake container has already overflowed. We clean it. And continue in the same spirit until we completely empty the bowl. Done. The result was 10 liters of juice. And the second flavor will be orange. Pour the fruit into the sink. Fill it up with water. And each orange needs to be thoroughly washed. In order to extract the maximum from an orange, you need also its extract. To do this, remove the thinnest top layer of zest with a vegetable peeler. It is in that aromatic essential oils are stored. We cut off the zest of about 10 oranges. And now we chop it up with a knife. We will extract the fragrance using the Soclet extractor. We send a piece of gauze to the extraction flask. And fill it to the brim with our orange peel. Another one of gauze. And we move on to the second flask. It's a refrigerator. To make it work, it needs to be filled with as cold of water as possible. The hole is sealed with tape so that it doesn't leak out. Done. The last flask remains, and we will pour two bottles of alcohol into it. After all, it is alcohol that dissolves essential oils well. Assemble a system of these three flasks. We take an electric stove and put an extractor on it and turn it on at medium power. The alcohol heats up and as soon as it reaches 78 degrees, it begins to boil and steam rises up through our system. As soon as it reaches the refrigerator, it immediately cools down. And in the form of condensation, it flows into the extractor where it dissolves the essential oils contained in the orange peel. Subsequently, alcohol with a powerful orange smell flows back into the lower flask. And so on in a circle. An hour later, the natural orange flavor is ready. And it is very rich. <sighs> back to the oranges. Citrus juicer, two buckets. A sieve goes on top and you can start. 
cut the oranges in half. The pulp is pressed against the juicer and it squeezes out the juice as efficiently as possible. We filled up our first cup. You can pour through a sieve into a bucket. And we throw out all the delayed particles so that the sieve does not clog. We pass all the oranges through the juicer. And we're left with 10 liters of juice. As a mold for the worm, we will use a corrugated pipe. Normal people use it for hoods. We stretch it to a length of about one and a half meters. Done. We also need two balloons. Inflate them so that they stretch to the maximum. The main thing is not to burst yourself with such tension. And we blow it back. We cut off the narrow neck and pull on one side of the tube. This is necessary so that the edges of the future worm are rounded. We connect the plastic clamps together and fix the ball with them so that it doesn't fly off. On the other side of the pipe, we pour some oil and turn the pipe to lubricate every fold inside. That's it, the oil can be drained. The second ball is dipped in oil. Turned right inside out. And also pulled onto the pipe. And we fix it exactly the same way. And in the middle of the pipe, we make a small incision. And we bend it a little bit so that there's a little bit of place to pour the jello. To separate the layers, insert the cardboard. And so that it doesn't pop out, fix it with a screw. We proceed to the preparation of the jelly itself. We need two large pots and pour two types of juice into them. To make the taste richer, add citric acid and sugar. And our flavoring is also added to the orange juice. All of this is thoroughly mixed. Now you need 10 kilograms of gelatin. The strength of gelatin is measured in grams. If it in stores about 150 bloom, then we have 250. In general, it's much more powerful. We fill it with a measuring cup and put it in there into the saucepan, stirring constantly. Five kilograms of gelatin should be poured into each of the juices. It immediately swells up and our juices no longer looks like liquid. We put the pots on the stove. Turn on the burners. And start mixing up our mass. After 40 minutes of continuous stirring, the gelatin is finally melted. 
We transfer the pans closer to the mold. We collect another hot mass and pour it carefully into the mold. This way we gradually fill out our form completely with fruit jelly. Then we remove the partition. And I gotta say that this was in vain because it was necessary to wait for the jelly to set a little bit. We turn on the air conditioner and let the form all night sit. The next morning, the jelly was completely frozen. Let's cut the shape lengthwise. Begin to open it. After that, we simply roll our giant jelly worm onto the table. And it turned out to be the right shape. Every fold of the pipe was imprinted. But the tastes, unfortunately, are kind of mixed. We got a carriage orange worm. But that's not all. We remembered that there are still such worms in the dusting with a richer taste. And decided to do something similar with our own. Just sprinkled it with citric acid. And sugar. Well, let's cut off a piece and try it. Hi, everybody. I think that many of you have tried this kind of Kinder Bueno bar. Let's open it up. We're gonna make the exact same one, just in a big size. But first, you need to try it. On the outside, we have chocolate then a waffle layer with nut paste, and then the cream itself, which is also pretty nutty. The first thing we need is a big, huge mold. Our dad's gonna make it for us from this huge pipe. Using a tape measure, we measure out a meter of 20 and mark it with a marker. From the side, we drill a hole with a screwdriver and then cut the pipe with a jigsaw. Now we're gonna draw along. And cut the pipe into exactly two parts. Now we will make a stand out of wood. To do this, we cut a large board into two parts. Circle the outer diameter of the pipe and cut it with the jigsaw. With sandpaper, we knock down all of the burrs. Two such details are needed. We need a wide board to put between them and tighten everything with screws.
two large semicircles were also carved out of wood, and three smaller ones, but at the same time they were twice as wide. We put half of the pipe on the stand, lubricate a large semicircle with glue, and put it into the pipe. Additionally, we fixed them with screws. We put the missing parts in. And our form is ready. But in order to be used, we take some small half circles and wrap them with some cling film. Done. Then we lubricate our mold with some oil. We're gonna smear it along the walls. And then glue down some parchment paper. Then we put everything back in its place. Let's start our cooking with the nuts. There are 20 kilograms of them here. We transfer them into a meat grinder. And grind them through a small nozzle. Now we'll need to melange sugar, and cocoa. We collect one kilogram of crushed nuts, then turn on the melange and pour them in. By the way, at first while the mass is dry, it can stop. Therefore, we'll help it out. Then add in some sugar and cocoa powder. After about 40 minutes, we'll get a chocolate nut paste. We'll just tilt our melange and put all of the paste into a pan. Thus, we turn 10 kilograms of nuts into the paste. Done. Now let's make our dough for the waffles. We break 48 eggs into a big gastro pan. Add three kilograms of sugar. For taste, we'll use some vanilla sugar. And then we go to the butter. Cut off 1.5 kilograms and put it into a saucepan. Also add one kilogram of margarine. Let's put all this onto the stove. Melt and pour into our big catering pan. Let's whisk our mix until it's smooth. Now we just need to pour in three kilograms of flour. And then finally knead the dough. Done. We scoop it up with a spoon and put it into our waffle iron. We close them. And after three minutes, they're ready. You can get them out. And then we open up our nut paste and spread a thick layer onto the waffle. Then we glue it inside of the mold. We worked with like a conveyor belt, really. And while one was making waffles, four waffle irons at once, the second was putting them into a mold until it was completely filled. Now let's go to the cream. We open up some bottled chicken eggs and pour them into a bowl. There are 20 eggs in each bottle, and so we have 10 of them in total. Pour in three kilograms of flour and mix it all with a mixer until smooth. And then we made this thicker and we will cook the cream in such a huge saucepan. We take a lot of milk out of the refrigerator. Open them up. And pour them into a large saucepan. Then we put the 
side of the burner, cover with the lid, and turn on the gas. As soon as the milk is heated, we add in 12 kilograms of sugar to it. And mix it all with a construction mixer. Without stopping stirring, pour in the thickener into a thin stream. You also need to melt three kilograms of butter. Pour this into the cream. And here are the remaining crushed nuts. Make them into our cream. You gotta do this until it's smooth. It's already thickened up, so we pour it into our mold. We spread out the waffles with the remaining nut paste and put it on top of the cream. That's it, we send our mold into the freezer. Two days later, everything's hardened up. Therefore, we move on to the next step. We're gonna open up some milk chocolate and send it into a Marmite. Turn it on so this starts to heat up and stirring constantly melt that chocolate. Now it's liquid, but to make it even better on the bar, you need to add some oil. In mix. It's much more liquidy now. Now it's time to get the mold out of the freezer. We transfer the liquid chocolate onto the waffles and smear it around. We keep doing this until we cover the entire surface with chocolate. Now let's put some more chocolate into the Marmite. We put a sheet of chipboard on top of the bar and press it as hard as possible with stretch film. First, we lower the form to the floor. And then we already turn it over into this little thing covered with film. Now the stretch film can be removed. Carefully lift up the mold. And tear off the parchment. And open up the film around that wooden semicircle. We screw a self-tapping screw into it and take it out. And then we remove the film itself. The extra milk chocolate pellets have already been melted. Therefore, we scoop milk chocolate with a measuring cup and just pour it all over our bar. We do one more layer, and then just let the chocolate harden. 
Now we just need to repeat only these thin strips of dark chocolate. Therefore, put a bowl on a steam bath, put some dark chocolate into it. And constantly stirring, melt it. Our already liquid chocolate is poured into a pastry bag. And we pour this over the bar. That's it, our giant Kinder Bueno is finally ready. I think it turned out just perfect, you guys. Well, let's cut off a piece. Inside it is very similar to the original Kinder Bueno. Let's try it. It turns out that the taste is also really similar. I think you're wondering where we're gonna put this huge bar. We just simply wrapped it up in film for transportation and took it to the children's home. The children were so glad to see it. Don't forget to like this video and click on this playlist, you guys. There's still a lot of huge food left to be made. Bye, everybody.